الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعينه سبحانه وتعالى نستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ به عز وجل من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف بإذن ربه الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن أزواجه وذرياته وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم جميعا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته أما بعد يقول المولى عز وجل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم وعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحبوا شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلم لا يا الكريمة في سورة البقرة Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kutiba alaykum al-qital. Qital, defending yourself. A defensive act. Against an oppressor. That's what qital is. It's not aggressing or initiating. It's being transgressed upon and defending yourself. Allah says, Kutiba alaykum al-qital. Defending yourself is prescribed upon you. I say, why was it? Why? And does it require prescription and instruction that you may defend yourself? Is it that natural? Not necessarily, maybe, because maybe prophets before, uh, as we have alleged evidence to say, that no, if someone transgresses upon you, allow him to transgress again. Yani, uh, for example, in the sense if Someone slap you on the, slaps you on the right, uh, turn the other cheek, allow me, he can slap you again or to, slaps you again. And I'm not sure, I'm not a biblical scholar here in this sense. Lakin, it seems that Islam does not want you to say, if someone slaps you on the right, allow him to slap you on the left. No. Don't allow him to slap you. It's the right thing. And at the same time also, do not transgress. Right, so there is a difference between defense and transgression. So here the ayah comes: "Kutiba alaykum al-qital, wa huwa khayr, wa huwa kurh lakum afwan, and it is hated for you. You hate to fight." And of course, the ayah was revealed to the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. والصحابة بشر, human beings. Human beings do not put the one, no, no human being usually 
wants to put themselves in harm's ways. I mean, the fitra of the human being is safety. You know, how can I live safely? Even if sometimes it means you let go of some of your rights or some of the things, how can I just have, just go about my life and live normally? As if the Quran is trying to say to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, to the prophetic companions 1400 some years ago, fighting to defend yourself against a, 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 an actual transgressing oppressor is prescribed upon you and we know that you hate it. As if it's saying, as if the Quran is saying, it's normal for human beings not to want to fight. That's maybe the fitra, that's the essence, that's the purity. Not to live, all right, not, thou shalt do no harm. The ayah taban comes as a stage among stages. As you know, the Prophet sallallahu lived in Mecca. Well, first, the prophetic mission was 23 years. Right? Yani the Prophet sallallahu announced his prophecy when he was 40. That was in Mecca. Lived in Mecca 13 years with the mission. So that's after the mission. Then moved on, migrated to Medina and lived in Medina propagating the mission for another 10 years. So the prophetic mission is about 23 years. And you know, in the Meccan phase, the mushrikeen in Mecca, yani the people in Mecca in general, the authorities, the people in Mecca were fighting the Muslims, even though Muslims were not permitted to fight back. The ayah came later, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا بِأَنَّهُمْ Permission is given to those who have been fought, that they have been oppressed, and now they can defend themselves. So even defending themselves through violence, or meaning through being armed, was not permitted at the beginning, and therefore you saw the Meccans uh, killing, let's say, people in cold blood. Yani Ammar bin Yasir, for example, radiallahu anhu, his father, his mother, Sumayya, his father Yasir, were killed in cold blood just simply for saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, for belonging to a faith. Simple as that. That's that, simple as that. Even though the rituals of the faith were not practiced in a congregational way the way they are today. Yani salah in congregation five times salah was not made mandate at that time yet. That came, that was made mandate towards the end of the Meccan phase, right before Hijrah. Siyam in the second year of Hijrah. Zakah in the second year of Hijrah. The Prophet Sallallahu performed Hajj towards the end of his life, والسلام, as we know it. So there was really no ritualistic congregational practices that people would be averse to or upset with in Mecca. That they say, who are these people? What are they doing? Why are they doing what they're doing? Why are they taking some of our space? No, no, no. People simply opted to believe in, to believe in the creator of all rather than worshipping the creation. Simple. And you all know that the Meccan phase was focused on two things. Tawheed wa akhlaq. Al-fiqh mostly came in Medina. Tawheed means you worship the creator, you don't worship the creation. That's what Tawheed basically means. Whatever that creation is, whether you make the creation into money, power, idols of your ancestors, which that's what they were, glorifying your own tribe in a form of a, an idol of your ancestors or whatever it is, all that is a creation worship. And the idea that Islam was telling them, well, you, thou shalt worship the creator, not the creation. That's one. Number two, in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ was focusing on akhlaq. I don't know how to call it. Tarbiyah, upbringing, raising a society, a refinement of a refining society, polishing that society to be a very 
the mannerliness of that society is really high. Teaching them to be more selfless. Teaching them to share more, even though people share. But the call is to share more, to give more, to help more. Because the basic premise that the Prophet ﷺ taught us through many of his hadith and many of his uh, uh, teaching that if we fail, and I've said that many times, that if we fail to identify with the suffering of our fellow creation, not just fellow human beings, why do you think the Prophet ﷺ spoke about noise pollution? When people, some people's noise is pollution. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ spoke about water pollution in the ahadith? Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ spoke about grass and open areas? Uh, why do you think the Prophet ﷺ spoke about imatatul adha an tariq That part of your iman is that you clean the street in front of you and you clean the street. You see a harm on the street, you don't just walk, you clean it. That's part of your faith. It's your community. What happens to your community will eventually happen to you. All these things are, one of you would not be a believer until you've, uh, you love for each other what you love for yourself. All these things are meant to, to what? It's refinement of society. And the Prophet ﷺ, except the Prophet ﷺ was what? Was connecting it to faith. Your iman would not be complete until you are like this. Your iman would not be complete if your neighbor is hungry. And did not say the neighbor whether he is the same tribe or the same belief or the same things. It's just your neighbor. You would not be a, believer, a complete believer until so and so. Notice how the Prophet ﷺ was trying to raise a Sahaba radiallahu anhu to a level. And that's where you see the Hassan hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, I was sent to perfect the standards of ethics and values. Yet still, despite that, and then there was transgression upon the Muslims. Obviously, despite all that, they're trying to be better people. That's all they're trying to be. But there was all these aggressions upon them. Uh, uh, the word terrorism, I know today it's been used uh, very laxly and sometimes subjectively. I mean, whatever, I mean, you know, uh, uh, whatever it is, the usage, the political usage. But uh, violating people's right for political purposes, religious purposes, economic purposes, whatever purposes, that was done or perpetrated on the Muslims in Mecca 1400 some years ago. To the point that they had leave to had to leave their homes and be uh, and be expelled to basically practically to Al Habasha. They went to East Africa, seeking refuge. First refugees. <laughs> it seems that the story of refugees and Muslims go a long way. First refugees from Mac they're Meccans from Mecca from their own homes were pushed out. They had to go to Africa to save themselves from the tyranny of the Meccans. Then another migration went to Medina, etc. In Medina now things were different because in Medina it was a society that was that entirely embraced the faith. Oh, the whole society embraced the faith. When I say the whole society, it means the vast majority of society. Well, since the vast majority of society embraced the faith now, the culture in Medina and the situation in Medina was pretty much Muslim. So therefore you see now fiqh, now mu'amalat, how... how you know, the procedures for marriage, the procedures for divorce, the procedures for this, the procedures for transactions, business, the development of the procedures of zakah on different things, etc., etc., etc. All the mu'amalat, all the human dealings were there then coming in Medina. And because in Medina there was establishment now, the Prophet ﷺ established a masjid. First thing he did in Medina. There was a necessity now seems like Al-Quran Al-Karim says, you need to be able to defend yourself. So therefore Al-Quran reveals, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ Fighting to defend yourself is prescribed upon you even though it's hated to you. But as if the Quran is saying to them, first of all you, it's qital, and qital is Qital doesn't mean qatala. There is difference between qatala or qita, uh, yani qatil and qital. 
Qatl means killing. Qital means defending yourself against someone who is attacking you. So Al-Quran is very specific here. That it's supposed to be when, when someone is transgressing against you, you're defending yourself. That's the idea here. Allahumma salli wa sallim. Allah, Allah, Allah. طيب. In these circumstances, yani where the uh, Sahaba radiallahu anhum has, have established Medina, there's, now they have tribes, they have humans, they have biz there's business, there's institutions, etc., etc., etc. كتب عليكم القتال. Lakin the point is, Islam, just like yani Christianity in the sense of the sending of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam, just like Judaism and the sending of Sayyidina Musa, Moses alayhi salatu was salam, Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, did not come with a message to take the life away from people who don't believe in them or who are not like them. In fact, exactly the opposite. The prophets alayhi salatu was salam came, all of them, all the messengers, whether it's Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, they came to afford people dignity irrespective whether they believe in them or they don't believe in them. Why? Because the very creator subhanahu wa ta'ala of all allowed people who disbelieve in him to disbelieve in him. Well, if the creator did not want people who disbelieve in him to disbelieve in him, he wouldn't allow them. Since he afforded them that and allowed them to disbelieve, the God himself, the creator of all, allowed people who disbelieve in him to disbelieve in him. The messengers afforded dignity to all humanity, whether they believe or disbelieve. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمَنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَكْفُرْ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا حَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا Say to them, O Muhammad, that حق is from your Lord. Whoever believes in it, believes in it. Who doesn't believe in it, doesn't believe in it. The creator will hold that people accountable. Right? With this, obviously, we live in a world because of the enablement of choice by human beings. Yani, we all believe that some people believe human beings have a free choice. In Islam, we lean more towards people have an enablement of choice to choose either good or evil. And since we're able to choose good and evil, there's always going to be good and there's always going to be evil. There's always going to be peace. There's always going to be violence. Our job is to stand against violence because it violates وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ what Allah says which means we have honored all the children of Adam. People I, for the past two months, I've obviously, you know, I've been out for the last two months almost six weeks or four or five weeks. But since the beginning of this episode, with the Gaza, the Gaza, with the, and the violence there and all that. And we've all been seen what happened on TV and the continuation of the violence that's happening. And I think it resumed today or yesterday and all that. And uh, you can't help it, but you see obviously what maybe some military con consultants call it collateral damage, what uh, politicians uh, some politicians justify as uh, there is no moral equivalence, so that means you need to continue violence. And some others, they call it other things. Everybody has their own uh, moral equivalence nowadays. Right? I'm not taking, um, this is not about talking about politics, because uh, I'm not an expert in politics, nor this is a political platform. So I'm not going to be taking, let's say, the uh, Hamas and the uh, Iran and their stands on the issue, nor am I going to be taking the PLO, the Palestinian Authority, and most of the Arab countries along with Israel more or less on the issue. I think instead of talking about moral equivalence here to justify more violence in Gaza, why don't we speak about human equivalence? 
from a religious perspective and a human perspective. Isn't that what's important for us? I mean, isn't there a human equivalence there? Aren't all humans equal in worth? And I think that's where our role is to increase awareness. I'm not gonna go into this political moral equivalence and who has, who has a justification to portray violence more against the other. All violence ought to be condemned against any human being, against any innocent human being. There has to, we have to look at human equivalence here. And, you, and obviously things are changing, and things are changing, and things are looking. You've seen also the tragic incident of the six-year-old in, in Illinois, Chicago suburbs, who was stabbed to death. That child did not choose any political agenda, did not have any political agenda as a six-year-old. And many of those thousands of children that have been now murdered in, in Gaza, they also have no political affiliation per se. They don't even know what politics is. They're trying to go down on the street and play. There is no moral equivalence that justifies violence. That there shouldn't be, at least. You've seen the uh, Palestinian, three Palestinian youth in Vermont, uh, out of all states, you all like the syrup there, I'm sure. We all enjoy that Vermont syrup, but somebody shot them. And uh, interesting enough, I don't know if it's interesting, but the news says three Palestinians were shot. Not two of them were Americans, meaning Palestinian Americans. So not Americans, Palestinians. Khair, inshallah. We're in, if you're in Palestine, say they're Palestinian. But here, you, they're American as well. So pointing out these things, I think, and showing that, look, there has to be human equivalence. Because frankly, and you all know this, this country has been lately in the past, it wasn't like this before, but in the past decade or so, white hate has been pushed. And we're sick, I'm sick of it, to be honest with you. Black hate is pushed, and we're sick of it as well. Latino hate is pushed. Christian hate is pushed. Jewish hate is pushed. Uh, Muslim hate is pushed. Isn't there enough with, like, agendas of hate? Can we start pushing, like, love each other, sort of? Moral equivalency? I mean, human equivalency? You all know that what happened in post 9-11 in this country, the tragedies that happened to the country in 9-11, and the post 9-11 rhetoric against Islam, which eventually started becoming sort of the Islamophobia. You all know this did not only hurt Muslims. When you lower the bar so much, when you dehumanize a fragment of society so much, and you put guilty because of by association to a group of citizens, Eventually, it's going to lower the bar on everyone. That's why today you have high anti-Semitic uh, hate. Obviously, well, because we've sort of closed a blind eye on all the Muslim hate that was happening for a long time to the point that it became normal. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. So today, obviously, there's anti-Semitic, lots of anti high anti-Semitism, anti-white, anti-black. It seems like everybody's anti, and you talk to, I'm anti this. How about we are for, uh, how, can, how about we define ourselves what we are for, not what we are anti. We're supposed to be a human family. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's only one human race. There's not many races on this earth. There's shades of one race. You all are, from, if you believe in the creator of all, then you all were created and you have one father and one mother, sorry. I mean, if you're thinking you're coming from a different place, you're not. And when cruelty is, I don't want to say legitimized, because I don't think anyone in their mind legitimizes cr cruelty. But when cruelty and violence is allowed to, is permitted to continue and to go on and to prosper and to live and to thrive, it will never hurt only one segment. It will lower the bar. It will wound humanity entirely. What happens to someone will happen to you. And I've said the prophetic message has always been that if we fail to identify with the suffering of any creature, let alone fellow human beings, then we haven't just betrayed our faith, but we have lost the test of our time. Because humanity will actually plummet 
in people. When we say it's okay for violence and, and hate speech against one segment of society to happen, but it's not okay against the other. It's not how things work. You know how things eventually become confusing. And dehumanization is always the precursor of genocide and doing evil and violating the rights of others. That's when, you, when people dehumanize people. That's what happened to black folks here and other areas. Dehumanization always led to a violation of rights. And I think we're in an era that we're, where we really need humanization. And I think that's where fa what faith systems need to play a, a part in. That's what we all need to. Obviously, what we do, we can't do anything except we pray. We pray, we ask the Creator, we beg the Creator to put in the hearts of all people guidance, to put in the hearts of all people that, you know, if cruelty is like a boomerang, it goes far, but it comes back. There's no point. It wounds the humanity within the human beings. There is no benefit that can be gained out of out of violence. I've always mentioned violence is the language of the inarticulate. And nonviolence is the language that knows no defeat, is the weapon that knows no defeat. And I think we are still struggling today, and obviously faith systems and, and religions have always been blamed for violence in the world, right? People always said religions are the reason, whether it was Judaism or Christianity or Islam. And I'm not saying that Jews, Christians, and Muslims are innocent of from perpetrating violence. Subjective, everybody depends on their uh, upbringing and uh, personal values. Association with, re with the religion specifically does not necessarily mean you reflect the religion. In other words, the religious does not necessarily reflect the religion. Obviously, that's a given thing. A religious is supposed to be committed to try to practice the religion as best as they, as they can or want, but that's not how it is. So, But having said that, Religions have always been blamed. And I tell you, religions have nothing to do with that, historically speaking. Religions in general did not promote violence. What promoted violence is greed, envy, and ambition. That's what promotes violence. But what's the best way to cloak it so you can, you can mobilize the masses? You cloak it in religious rhetoric. So everybody then fights about what they don't know about it. Like the Prophet ﷺ tells us in the authentic hadith, there will be a time where the killed doesn't know why they're killed and the killer doesn't know why he's killing. You know, just, just indiscriminate killing. Yeah, kill. Okay. Violence in, in many things that are happening to our, to our nature, to Mother Earth. To things around us. And I think it's very important as a community of faith, especially in these difficult times, obviously you see, uh, uh, you see rising Islamophobia, you see rising anti-Semitism, and obviously, I mean, when I hear anti-Semitism, I know what they say now, anti-Semitism is being anti-Jewish. Obviously, we're not anti-Jewish. Uh, but Semites are people who are Jews and Arabs, Akkadians, Phoenicians, they're all Semites, just so we also, if we go to the linguistic route, so if you're anti-Semite, you're also anti-Arab and anti-Phoenicians and all their languages because all these things are also Semitic languages and Semitic people. But anyway, I'm not saying that the point of anti shouldn't be there. And someone who is trying, yeah, and you notice what Allah Azza wa in the Quran says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas This is something I was earlier discussing with someone. He says, Sheikh, chosen people, I said, every human being is chosen people. I want to ask you a question. Were you created circumstantially and coincidentally, or were your creation by Allah's choice for you to be created? La ilaha illallah. Everybody from our faith perspective, everybody is chosen to be created. Everybody is chosen. There's no supremacy in being it one over the other except in what? Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. The best amongst you are those who contribute best to themselves and others. That's what it is. Otherwise, kullukum li Adam wa Adamu min turab. All of you are from Adam and Adam is from earth, from clay. There you go. 
So everybody is chosen. When the Quran Karim says, yani, and all of you are chosen, and all of you are chosen for a purpose, please. And if you haven't found your purpose for your chosenness, please read the Quran. There's a, you're, you've been chosen to live. You've been chosen. To, you are chosen. You, all of you all are chosen people. I don't care who you are. I don't, care, I don't care what your faith system is. I don't care what your color is or what your culture is. All of you are chosen to do good. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You have been the best nation that has ever come to mankind. How? How? Unconditionally so? Without any discretion or without anything? Association is automatic salvation? No. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. The reason you are the best nation is because and only when and if you do al-amr bil ma'roof nahi anil munkar which means what? Positive contribution to self and society. That's when you're good. That's what, that's what makes you different. The base is everyone is chosen. What makes chosen people better than others? Their positive contribution towards humanity, towards themselves, towards earth, towards nature, towards fellow creatures. And Allah says, notice the ayah, He puts the iman at the, at the third level here. Reason you are the best is because you order the good and forbid the evil. Your positive contribution. You try to stop harm, you try to do good. Then you believe in the creator of all. He didn't say you're the best, of, which means you're the best of the, of the nations because you believe in the creator. That's it, just because you believe. Wait. No, 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 no. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. Tanhawna anil munka. We don't believe in Islam, there's supremacy of anyone over other. Everybody is chosen by the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody has equal opportunity with the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one has the right to take other people's lives. Man qatala nafsan, bighayri nafs, the Quran al-Kareem says, whoever kills even one soul, kannama qatala nafsa jami'a, as if they killed entire humanity. Today, my dear beloved war, uh, brothers and sisters, our world is love deprived, mercy deprived. Shwayat rahma ya jama'a. Mercy deprived, just mercy. But I think yani, we can say to our dama'ir, yani, our conscience, illa lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we can pray uh, the janazah on our conscience because even the conscious no longer moves. We, there is this notion of failing to identify with the suffering of, of other human beings, and again, irrespective of the background of those human beings. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Notice, I'll finish with this. And today, Jumu'ah, and people read Surah Al-Kahf, right? In general. Alhamdulillah, that so the, the ayah Surat Surat Kaf starts with uh, praise be to Allah who has sent the book onto his messenger to help the people be directed towards the right cause and give glad tidings to the believers who do good. Notice not the believers only, believers who do good. It's always amanu wa amilu salihat and do good. Association by itself is not enough. There has to be some positive contribution, something. You come to this earth, you lived on this earth 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. What have you done other than just eating and sleeping and, 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 and having a, 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 a place to live and a car to drive? What have you done beyond that? What's something that, that you are involved in that's bigger than you? that impacted positively the rest of the creation. That's the point Al-Quran Al-Karim is asking. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. Let me go to the next one, where Al-Quran Al-Karim says, and then those people who disbelieve in the Creator, etc., he warns them. Allah says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَةً Ya Rasulullah, you are, your concern over those who do evil and deny the Creator and do evil deeds, your concern over them is, all, you're killing yourself almost over that. لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُونَ 
means la'allaka muhlikon. You're almost killing yourself out of concerns of those who do evil. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu rahmah was on those who also have denied him, did evil to him, yet he's almost killing himself over them. Why aren't they doing the right thing? How can I do it? Was that their failure or mine? There's an implicit notion there. Did I fall short in giving the message properly? That's why Allah give him a cons gives him a consolation in the next ayah. That this is, uh, this is your Lord's decree. So do not blame yourself. As it is, do not blame yourself. This is the idea today in a, in a rahma or mercy deprived world. And where people justify, and you get all these fancy words, right? Uh, moral equivalency. Okay, tamam, khair, inshallah. Tayyib, how about human equivalency? Basic, right? And we're talk those who want to fight, go fight on your own. Leave the children alone. Save the children. I think it's important to raise awareness on absolute basic human worth and dignity. And I also want to say one more thing again. Don't give up hope. Especially also in this country. You see people in this, there's lots of good people. Most people in this country are actually good people. And if they know, they, they know the truth, they will stand. People here, they, lo they love regardless what they are. Obviously, as a Muslim community, we stand very tall on the shoulders of the African-American sacrifices. That's a fact. Lack in, in general. People here in this country, they're justice loving. They're, they would stand with the, with the oppressed in general if they're told, don't give up hope. Speak about human values. Speak about love for all, malice towards none. Speak about nonviolence. That's what our faith came up with. And tell people that we, one human being, one child lost is one child too many, irrespective of who that child is. Child did not have a choice in all that big boys games. So there's lots of good and there's lots of change. This is a, a dynamic nation with the capacity to change. And therefore, it's very important to be engaged. It's very important to speak to people, to talk to people, and to spread love, not hate. We should not be for hate or for anti-anything. We are for everything that's good, everything that's decent, everything that's for the well-being and the prosperity of humanity. That's what we're for. Everyone ought to have hope, growth, and opportunity. Every human being. Everyone. It's just basic. And if we fail, as, a, as humanity today, then not just as Muslims, again, as humanity, then we have failed the test of our time and betrayed our faith as far as Muslims, and I'm sure others would also have betrayed their own faith by not stepping up to the plate and making, trying to make this world a more non-violent world, a more peaceful world, a more world uh, without those keyboard warriors and the political warriors and the, all those guys who, you know, they wear the the cloak of, you know, toughness and, you know, you know how it is. Construction, not destruction, is our call. For the betterment, the Prophet ﷺ had a wish for a better world. We ought to carry this wish for all the people in this world. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله. Oh, Allah. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر أشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم الشفيع المشفع في المحشر صلى الله عليه وعلى آله للفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلى من بآثاره مكتفى واهتدى واعتبر عباد الله اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقوى راقبوه مراقبة من يعلم ويعتقد بأنه يراه تزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضاه اعلموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويعطي ويمنع ويصل ويقطع ويخفض ويرفع إلا الله اعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما One last thing I want to say look since all this, this mess has been happening, right, from Iraq, 
Afghanistan, Yemen, Libya, Syria, and you all remember the promoters of violence. Huh? And at that time, there was jihad. We're telling them, man, uh -oh. jihad what? What is jihad? Blowing up your own buildings and your own cities. And what, where's the jihad there? And all those people today now, they're sleeping at Al Kaf. They're taking the nap of Al Kaf. They're no longer, there's no more. Before they're coming to the West and seeking bullets and jihad to fight their own. Because they disagreed with their own politically. And they issued political fatwas of jihad and everything. And we've said from the beginning, fundamentally nonviolence is the only way for reform. Don't believe the calls for violence or hate. The calls for violence are, are, and hate are toxic, irrespective of who says them. And unfortunately, humanity will pay the price for all that stuff. And a lot of people, lots of children in Syria and Yemen and Libya and all that, forgotten Iraq, Somalia, huh? uh, Afghanistan. Violence. For what? Promoting violence. Political violence being cloaked in religious rhetoric. And you've got these people now, they're, they're being activated. Go do this and go do that. Where are you? We haven't seen them call for nonviolence and helping people now. And I'm not talking about those guys who now all of a sudden represent the children of Gaza in, in fundraisers and in conferences either. That. I'm not talking about that either. Nobody really speaks for those innocent people, to be honest with you, except their souls. Those are the ones. Their own souls speak on their behalf. No one has the right to speak on their behalf. So for those who want to capitalize on all these political games and all these things and, and try all that stuff, that's... Nobody can speak on their behalf. We pray for a better world. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim. وعلى آل إبراهيم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فهده يا ربنا سواء السبيل آتي أنفسنا تقواها زكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اشف لهم مرضانا عاف مبتلانا فك أسرانا ارحم موتانا اغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ومشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات اللهم احقن دماء المسلمين المسلمين. اللهم احقن دماء أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم استر أعراضهم يا رب اغفر, دين. اغفر ذنوبهم ارحمهم يا رب يا رب تداركهم برحمتك وكرمك يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لصغارهم وكبارهم يا ربنا واهدنا وإياهم سبل السلام صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على محمد وآله الطاهرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة